Welcome River City Live to the Rattlesnake Conservancy. We're going to explore the dangerous rattly elements that they have here, but to tell us all about it is the executive director, Tony. So Tony, lots of mystery, lots of superstition surrounding snakes, but here you guys break it all down in a fun educational way so that we can understand and love what's in our backyard. Awesome, yeah. Uh, we. We're based here in Jacksonville. We were established back in 2017, and we lease areas here at the Tree Hill Nature Center. Um, we've got an awesome display of all of our native venomous reptiles here and do after-school programs and summer camps and things like that. Let's kick it off and talk about the building that we're in right now, because there's so much more to see besides just these specific snakes. Talk to us about this Pacific Nature Center. Yeah, so Tree Hill Nature Center is a 42-acre nature preserve that's kind of in the heart of Jacksonville. Um, a lot of urban areas surrounding it, so there's very few areas in Jacksonville you can find that are, are like this in the area. And uh, at the nature preserve, they've got all kinds of different native animals that they keep here for people to see. They've got different after-school programs and everything they do. Um, and we've got a great partnership working with them and, and being located here as both of us being nonprofits. It works really well for both of us. Tony, can you take us through meeting some of our scaly friends back here in their habitat? Absolutely. Yeah, we've got all of our native venomous snakes uh, that live here at the facility. All of these animals have either come from zoos or they've come from areas where development has kind of pushed them out of the area and they didn't really have anywhere else we could relocate them to. So we keep everything except for the coral snake here. So we've got six venomous snakes in the state of Florida, um, you know, ranging from the canebrake rattlesnake. We do get these up in the Jacksonville area and kind of but north of Jacksonville and all the way down into Gainesville. Um, don't, they don't really go much further south than that where we have them. Uh, we also have eastern diamondback rattlesnakes down here a little bit lower. We've got a couple different uh, eastern diamondbacks here at the facility, as well as copperheads and cottonmouths, probably the most notorious one everyone hears about all the time. This diamondback right here on the bottom, this is Bill. Um, he came from the Nokati area when it was being developed. And it's one of those areas where there's just, there's a lot of development going on. There's not a lot of areas that these snakes can go to. And diamondbacks in general um, have a really hard time being relocated long distances. You know, they'll stop eating. They don't quite understand where their home ranges are. And that's something that like our organization, one of our research programs is actually radio tracking the species in the wild to determine how they do when they're moved to other locations. But in some cases where we can't move them elsewhere, they end up coming to live here with us at the facility. And what a great place to live, I have to add. Another thing I want to touch on is how much technology you all have integrated into this program. I know you mentioned something called Snake Snap. We're going to hear a little bit from the founder of Snake Snap and hear how his personal fear actually got him into this line of work. Now, you wanted to share your story about how you went from someone who was very fearful of snakes to the point where you weren't going outside at certain times to somebody who now owns a snake-centered app. So tell me about that journey. Yeah, uh, biggest fear, I always say from Florida, snakes, alligators, lightning, in that order were my biggest fears. We had a snake in our pool, my son Carson found. It led to me trying to find out what it was. Uh, I couldn't, it was very difficult to find on Google. Found out what it was and that that particular snake gets into swimming pools to get a drink of water but can't get out because it's too tiny. I felt bad. As I continued to learn, my fear went away, literally. Um, and I learned little tricks, to, you know, tips, where they hide, what they eat, and it all kind of came back and made sense. So left my entire uh, finance career and went all in on this. So. We have every snake in the nation broken down by state. Um, our goal here, we, we identify for free. So, but where our main goal is, is education and awareness. So we send folks emails every month based on where they live. So if you live on the East Coast, what's in the West Coast is gonna be completely different. So that education allows people to not be fearful the next time they have an encounter, protect their kids, their pets. So there's a lot of questions out there and, and people wanna know, and it's actually having a tremendous effect. Well, thank you so much for answering those questions and making everybody feel a little bit safer with Snake Staff. about the Rattlesnake Conservancy, make sure you check out Save the Buzz Tales on their website, and you can download Snake Snap to your iPhone or Android. Mark? Thanks, Jana. We have a 